Uh, so uh, the plan is, I think Dan's going to kick us off. He's the uh, the pro, and uh, and then we'll just you know uh, take volunteers after that. I know somebody was asking about signups, but basically we'll just raise hands and go from there. So you want to kick it off? All right, let's do it. Don't need one. Just need to. So uh, I hope you all have been having a good time at uh, OSS uh, Summit North America. I wanted to bring you all in here. So before we get on with uh, the rest of the day, I've got to do the timeshare pitch for uh, customer support for contractors. Now, I'm sure the very first question that you're having right now is, what kind of a contractor? And I'm not going to tell you because that makes this significantly more interesting. Now, when I was putting together my new app, Customer Support for Contractors, I was thinking to myself, what is the key to success? What is going to make this application really kind of drive my you know, success metrics of money, making me lots of money? You all need to buy me a boat. <laughs> That's my key to success, is owning a boat. And you are all going to buy that for me. Now, when we talk about buying a boat, uh, we really have to go back to 2013. Now, I know many of you remember that 2013 was the year of the selfie. Literally, everybody, it was like a national epidemic where all you could do is just hold your phone in front of your face. And heck, half our phones didn't even have front-facing cameras back then. 2013 was the dark ages. And I thought to myself, you know what? Somebody needs to fix this. You know who fixes this? Contractors. And contractors need customer support. You see, you know, when contractors, you go to contractors for help, this is what it looks like. This is, you know, I had a contractor wear a camera on their head uh, while a bunch of people were screaming at them saying, hey, you know, why isn't my porch done? It shouldn't take six and a half years to install a fridge in my kitchen. Uh, and it looked like this. And it's, it's pretty scary, especially the guy in the upper left-hand corner. Like, we don't know what's up with him. Uh, we think we reported them to the police. Um, and so when we looked at this, we were like, oh, there's this really, really, really good opportunity. Not, not, not a great opportunity, not a big opportunity, but a huge opportunity. I had a huge opportunity in front of myself to build this uh, uh, customer support. Uh, and we worked with Constant Contact. Uh, <laughs> Because we listen to uh, podcasts, and they're the only system that we are aware of that existed. Um, now, we've gone through a lot of pivots. Uh, some of the pivots were not our best. We were uh, big into the metaverse, which, you know, some of you may be thinking, oh, that's not a bad pivot. We were in the metaverse in about, you know, 2013. We were doing this in Second Life. We were, you know, 10 years too early. Um, and uh, we allowed custom creation of avatars, and uh, we prefer not to talk about that time. It was a pretty silly time. Uh, we tried to do customer support on, uh, on the metaverse, and, you know, if you think about the kind of person who calls a contractor, do you think they even know what a computer is? That's why they're calling a contractor. So it was a pretty bad time. Uh, we tried to sell our services. We got laughed at a lot. This is, a, in fact, a screenshot of an email that we received uh, from one of our uh, potential investors. Um, so we went through a series of layoffs after this bad pivot, uh, and we laid off our graphic designer. Um, <laughs> Because I thought to myself, I have a copy of PowerPoint from 1993. I can clearly get this done. And um, I think it's great. Uh, and if you all want to leave this room alive, you will tell me it looks great, too. Um, so we're at the end of this. We fired everybody. And you know what? It's time to turn on silos. I don't talk to myself. And that hasn't been good for product development. Um, so we thought to ourselves, tear down some silos, went out to Topeka, Kansas, and literally tore down some silos. That didn't actually help anything. I don't know why anybody tells businesses to tear down silos. It just leaves a mess. And nowhere to store my grain. Um, but at the end of the day, we have uh, customer support for contractors. Um, and thank you all for attending our presentation. Uh, and don't forget, our app's name is... It's just that motion right there. <laughs> Thank you. So who wants to go next now that you know the utter chaos that is Power Slides? Claudio. I'm so fucked. <laughs> Music stream. 
for pet owners, so imagine you know that moment that you have a pet and they love to talk to you, you know, bark a lot and meow, 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 and then you're like, okay, you know, we could make music out of this and then sing with your pets, but then I'm an owner and I have no idea what I'm doing here. <laughs> oh my god, this is so hard. Uh, You know, that, that just forget about uh, st music streaming for pet owners because it didn't work. You know, I was, yeah, it didn't work, you know. <laughs> back to reality. Uh, back from. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't. Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> okay, so, you know, I was dreaming with my pets and then I realized they were barking at me, you know, while I was, you know, pitching that. Uh, uh, <laughs> using a streaming app for pet owners and then realize, oh no, I'm, I'm drowning and I'm... <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and then I realized Bad Boy, which is the name of my, you know, my dog, you know, he's a jerk. He's... Okay. Um, I don't know if he does that, but what the fuck? Um, he has a scary face, you know, everybody always asks, oh, what's wrong with your dog? And I think maybe that's why the reason he needs to listen to some music to chill a little bit because, you know, he barks a lot. Uh, <laughs> But, um, oh, he's not that okay, I didn't realize that. So, you know, he, <laughs> he thinks he's a lion, you know, and, you know, and he's eating a lot, so I think he needs to search some healthy options, do some technological developments of his mental health, I guess. Uh, make a way to make Donald's bread. <laughs> what? <laughs> what even? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, and you know, to make a successful music music stream, you have you have to collaborate, and you know, with <laughs> yes, <laughs> because demons definitely give you a food source for your music streaming app. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yes, and you know, and then the many black they just knocked my door, and they were like, "What the fuck are you doing with your life?" Uh, and yeah, and they won seven awards by doing that, I guess. Um. <laughs> I don't even know how to mix that. No, that's that's too much. <laughs> Yeah, check your phone. Oh, maybe there's something happening right now. Uh, my new music stream app just hit Play Store, so you know you can start, you know, listening to your pets singing, I guess, <laughs> while you're under the bed crying about life. <clears throat> <laughs> Fantastic. And you know, after after my music streaming app getting so successful, you know, they said, you know, go to the moon, you know, and, and think about life with with horses and and and, and <coughs> Yes, yeah, so, you know I talked about Apollo eleven for some reason. I have no <laughs> don't forget. Or app name is please, I'm suffering. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, we got a volunteer ready to roll. Let's go. <laughs> oh, I'm as ready as I'm going to be. Brunch organizing for yoga instructors. All right. As most of you know, my other hobby is a yoga instructor, and I do like brunch as much as anyone else. So tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., we'll have brunch and then yoga. It'll be super fun. And then we can do that in any town around the U.S. or maybe in the world. Organizing yoga instructors is like herding cats. It's almost as bad as organizing developers. It's pretty crazy, but somehow we'll find food and, and do some down dogs with that. And of course, as both a yoga instructor and a computer person and a dinosaur aficionado, you can find this amazing history of computers raw and uncut on my YouTube channel where it shows up as commercials during my yoga videos I recorded during COVID. It's really amazing. And now for the low price of $9.99 per month with your free with purchase of CD. <laughs> Woo! I obviously have a lot of energy. It's only the eight cups of espresso probably today that I've had. 
Oh, who is Blair Singer? I don't remember who that is. He looks kind of like Tim Allen. Is he, uh, I don't know, who is that guy? It's really strange. I don't know how he showed up in my slide deck about yoga, because I don't think he could do a down dog to save his life. But his, he, maybe he could do some neck yoga with a little, you know, standing like that. We'll see. Oh, the Octobus. This is the predecessor, the Octokit that GitHub released. This is the inspiration for that. It's a really cool animal. We try this pose during our yoga practice every day. We don't quite achieve it because we only have two limbs instead of eight, so it's a bit of a challenge. But as you know, in yoga, you do things in your mind perfectly. So in your mind, you have eight limbs perfectly forming the Octobus, and, but even if you only have two real limbs in the real world, not in the metaverse. <laughs> The, the town I'm from is Gilbert, and Gilbert is known for goat yoga. And so goat yoga is a great way to connect between animals and your yoga practice and your brunch. And, you know, if you're really hungry, you can eat your goat after you do your yoga with your goat <laughs> and have a lot of fun with your animals and have that nice communication between farm to food to table. Oh, wow. I really like this. I hope you really like this talk I'm giving. You'll like my yoga practices. If you go to my channel and watch YouTube and watch some of my yoga brunching, then you can like it, and I get a lot of followers, and I can maybe get a nice hairdo like that back from the early 90s. Is that the guy from... Is that the vampire movie? Which vampire movie is that? Yeah, that's pretty cool. I don't know what vampires in yoga have to do with each other. I just thought this looked really, really cool. And obviously, all these ideas are coming together to form this brilliant idea of yoga brunch, vampires, down-dogging with Rick Astley-style looks. And nobody knows exactly why we're doing this, what we're doing, but whenever you show a light bulb in a slide deck, obviously you win. You're totally on top of it. You've got the best ideas, and this is the, like, question mark in the old, you know, the answer before profit. Well, now that is interesting. I had ChatGPT generate this for me earlier today. And I said, could you take a really scary animal, some random person who wants to be shrunk, and say, how could we make something that doesn't look like yoga at all, but that might make sense as I'm rambling on here talking about skyscrapers. And I don't know what that has to do with yoga, but it's pretty cool. So I think it's a pretty nice slide. Go ChatGPT. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, <laughs> yoga can make us look more human. Have you seen the, the chat? You... <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. I knew that, and chat GPT knew that, which is why they put it on this slide for us. This is amazing. Anyway, video does make us look more human, but being in real life here together makes us feel 3D much more than video. And thank you. What was my app's name? Yoga Brunch, yoga brunch something or another. Yep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Very good. All right. We're looking for another volunteer. Oh, did you raise your hand in the back? No? No? Okay. Uh, uh, oh, Jory's in. All right. Woo! <laughs> it's inspiring. It is inspiring. I hope to inspire you today with my, my pitch for car rentals for small business owners. Pra the most practical pitch that you're going to hear all day for sure because small business owners need to get from point A to point B all of the time. And what is a better way to do that than a, by, by car, right? We all are taking Ubers and Lyfts and all of that sort of thing. But wouldn't it just be nice if you just had your own car that you could take uh, and to call your car to come to you, you're going to just, um, you're going to do this new thing. It's called tweeting. Um, and you do that on some different digital apps. Um, you can also use the phone to, to call the car and make a tweet. Um, and... <laughs> You should get, let me get my, um, my, my nose pierced, and, and what we're going to do is actually have our users all pierce their noses, similarly to what you see here on my nose, and that's how users are going to let each other know that they are all part of the small business car rental tweeting network, um, and... So one thing that you have to bear in mind about cars and nose piercings and tweets is that not everything that you read on the internet is true. And I know that that is probably a big surprise to all of you because I, for one, only tweet true things. Yeah. 
And I know that all of you also only would ever tweet something for real, right? You would never tweet something unfactual. Um, speaking of facts, which are very important to cover in tweets, and I have tweeted this, don't you worry, you can, you can read this as well. There are people um, who just are using Twitter like zombies, and it's just kind of turning them like into like these drones, and they're just like kind of sharing these things called memes around with each other, and it's just like not okay. Um, and one of the questions that gets asked a lot on Twitter is whether Bigfoot, and by the way, this is Bigfoot. He is actually a trusted and, and loving family member. He is not dangerous at all. Um, so this is, you know, the kind of misinformation, frankly, that can get shared uh, online. Um, <laughs> And, um, but this is an example of non-misinformation because this is true, right? This, he does, this is a man, I think, actually, I should not, I don't know what his pronouns are, I'm sorry, that's rude, but he does have spiked hair. And so if you tweeted that, that would be okay because that is true. Um, and also he might need a car to rent from me. Um, so... Uh, some things that I can recommend to you about cars and also tweeting and nose piercings. Um, or is there some movies that you could check out that could tell you more? Like The Secret uh, about nose piercings and What the Bleep Do We Know, Twitter. And um, this actually sucked. Um, so... <laughs> um, sometimes when I just get fed up, I just say, you know, just Shrek it. Just Shrek it. Uh, you'll see, you'll, I'll say that all the time, and I think it's, uh, it really captures, like, how we're feeling right now in this post-pandemic world where we just need to get from point A to point B and tweet about it and all of that. And so um, that's, I just, you know, I think this is a great guide. Uh, so thank you. Uh, don't forget uh, my app's name is Shrek It. Well done. Well done. You up next? <laughs> all right. Uh, very good. Uh, Wes, all right? Yeah. right in. Oh, no. Uh, too, much, too much expectation. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so my name is Wes. Uh, I work on Java apps because I said yes to every recruiter email, and that was all of what they offered. But my real passion is actually horseboarding for robots. So what I do in my side project here is I actually train AI robots to board horses, literally to climb onto the back. You thought keep them like for the weekend, right? But no, literally I taught the robots how to jump onto the horse. And the last time they did that, it really didn't work out well. Um, the, the AI model was not very well trained. It was uh, version one, and it got, you know, kicked um, by the horse, I guess. Um, and, uh, oh, and I wanted to say, I, I built these slides uh, literally last minute, and I think they all feel like they're about to explode. Um, so, like, sorry, they're ticking away. The time is ticking, and I am definitely at my wit's end um, with I'm sorry, it's, it's going to be an eminent end here for the, the AI robots. Um, they didn't, it didn't really work out well, so I'm, I'm really trying, um, and, and, I, and I actually blame the fact that I initially tried to write this whole AI training thing in JavaScript. I should have written it in TypeScript. It would have had zero bugs. It would have worked without any unit tests. Um, <laughs> but I made the mistake, and so now I'm uh, working with my friends at Facebook and Twitter and MySpace. Uh, I, I literally came over to a LAN party with my like keyboard around my neck for them to help me write this app because I actually don't know TypeScript. So right, like I'm trying to rewrite it, and the whole thing is exploding. Um, and and this is what we looked like when we finally got it working. Um, we, 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 we did this, right? And then uh, we realized that was the key to the robots getting on the horse, right? So the key was that they had to have confidence, like the skeleton. Uh, I don't know. I can't even read that. It's blue on blue. Who, who made these slides? <laughs> Not me. Um, and, 
And then, and then honestly, we, we said we need confidence and corn. And if we have confidence and corn, we can absolutely get these horses under control so that our AI-trained robots can board them. And the horses obviously said, yes, I will have some corn. <laughs> because who wouldn't want a nice, beautiful Mario and I don't even know why Bowser and Mario are there, but... Um, <laughs> Right, and so what we did with this whole experience <laughs> is that we found uh, life on another planet. Uh, it was not what we expected to find through this whole horse, AI, machine, robots, boarding situation, but we did it because AI and machine learning will unlock unlimited possibilities for you, literally finding extraterrestrial life um, at the end of the rainbows. Uh, and, and, and my real message to you is just to believe in the things that you can burn to jubajikujubajush um, and, and at, at all the unseen blessings and triumph in the world because the earth, you are a earth, <laughs> earth, um, and and this is, and this is really what I learned because my, my child, my children, uh, gave me this pros and cons list about myself. And it really put things into perspective when I was trying to train these AI boarding horse things, um, is that I needed a hybrid framework to, to set a foundation with agile approaches and not unknown market adoption, because who really needs AI trained robots who can board horses anyway? Um, so thank you. And uh, don't forget to go download horse or shit. <laughs> Very well done. Very well done. All right, we're on a roll. We're on a roll. Who's who's out here? Who wants the next uh, turn? No, no. Uh, Ethan, Ethan. All right. It's gonna be magical. Oh boy, y'all are gonna get sold so hard. <laughs> All right. Oh, my favorite topic. Okay, guys. So I'm here to tell you today about this wonderful new invention. I was working really, really hard, and I discovered centaurs exist. Now, centaurs are unique. They're just like cats. They're just like dogs. They're just like humans. They need their own Tinder for online payments. And so I'm here to introduce my application, Hinge for centaurs. I mean, online payments for centaurs. Yes. And so I discovered the centaurs on a, my, la, my latest trip to Naboo, where the Gungans, um, they were the ones who, who showed me the way to the centaurs. And these centaurs were very lonely creatures who really struggled to, um, you know, find a way to give each other money. And so this is where the app had to come in. And we started, okay, the people are always running. The centaurs are half people, I think. So they're always running. And they decided, well, if I'm running away from my problems and running to solutions, who am I giving my money to? Because money is the root of all evil. Money is the root of all problems. So sometimes they push the people and they don't say, excuse me, or I'm sorry. This app made sure that every time you make a transaction, it's immediately followed by, I'm sorry. While on this expedition, me and the centaurs were frolicking through a field, and all of a sudden, a vampire showed up. And this vampire promised us unlimited knowledge. This, this vampire is actually the reason why we have this app. He said, oh, your life is not fulfilled. Here, let me show you how you can waste your money. Give it all to me. <laughs> Is this just the song? Oh, those are facts. Um, and so it turns out that with our new companion, the vampire, as we're frolicking through this field together, um, Sai, the wonderful creator of Gangnam Style, came on and decided to show us the way. So not only will our app let you send your money and fulfill your, de your largest desires, but it will play that song in the background simultaneously. And it's true. The centaurs are really sensitive. This app is helping them further their progress in society and turn the manly, manliest of men into the sensitive being you see displayed here. And this is why centaurs really needed this, this, this app. <laughs> so creationism. <laughs> 
Yeah, creationism. Centaurs, they, they had to come from somewhere, and it definitely was not evolution. <laughs> yes, and as we said, creationism. The centaurs came from somewhere. It was not evolution, but the next natural step in their creationism is to become iron men. When you become an iron man, you're made out of metal. You're very cold. You need to be warm when you go to bed at night. This app lets you trade money for bed sheets. Brilliant, brilliant innovation. So all in all, my trip ended and I opened up my closet door, realized that I was trapped in there for three days and the, uh, the, the, the mushrooms that I had in my fridge were in fact not Baby Bella's. Um, I really, really hope that you enjoyed this, uh, this pitch for online payments for centaurs. They really, really do need your help. Thank you. Don't forget, our app's name is Centaurs Need Love. Well done, well done. All right, do we have any more takers? Anybody else gonna come on up here and uh, do another? Uh, I was afraid you'd say that. All right, all right. And then, and then we'll uh, have a good time doing something else, huh? <clears throat> oh, so this one's easy. At least it starts out easy, as most things do in life. <laughs> Photo sharing for teens. Teens these days, I have a teenager. He just turned 14. Uh, he shares photos. Um, he's got a girlfriend. They send photos to each other all the time, and I wanted to make that easier. So I thought, why not use an app, you know? So uh, we started to build this app to share t uh, photos with teens. And the first problem we had was that teens don't remember anything. Like, their, their brains are like a sieve. You know, you tell them we're going to have lunch in five minutes, and they come down in three minutes, and they're like, I'm hungry. And I'm like, well, I just told you. And he's like, I forgot my password. So uh, the first thing we did is worked on password recovery systems. And so that's a feature that you're going to love with this new app. Um, so this is one of the first pictures that was shared on the app, which is strange for teenagers. They're, they, they don't even know who this is. Um, but, you know, uh, people do ch uh, fear change. And so this has been a little bit of a struggle to kind of get some adoption going here. Um, and and people, people, frankly, they feared electricity, you know. They feared uh, the CD when the CD was made. They're like, this is going to ruin everything. Um, but... I, I, we've been working on outreach because we want everyone to be ready because everybody is ready already <laughs> to act, of course, right? And so, um, you know, people usually already have their phones in their hands and they're ready to get this app for their teenagers. Um, and, and then I, I realized that, you know, I'm doing this more for myself than for them. You know, they, they have a process. And, you know, I, I'm an engineer, so I'm always like, just build an app. Just go ahead. Well, why not build an app? You'll succeed in invoking greater positive attitude in your heart, but I should be thinking about their hearts because that's what's important here. If you saw uh, uh, Brian's uh, talk earlier, you know, you, you need to serve others, right? So that's when I went on a mental cycle. That's what I call a breakdown. Um, but I realized that I need to devote maybe 10% to business thinking. And, uh, you know, business isn't that complicated. And I feel like I was really overcomplicating this whole thing. I was, you know, uh, uh, I was thinking about marketing and customer support and the password recovery. Why did I start there? Um, so I went back to the basics, you know. Uh, Scooby-Doo kind of grounds me and brings me back to where I need to, to start and just, you know. Uh, uh, keep it simple, you know, screaming, diming, ding. That's one of my mantras. Um, and so this kind of helped me get, get, get my stuff figured out. And my problem, though, so uh, trust among team members is really important. My problem was I didn't have a team. <laughs> so you can imagine I'm on the left here. Uh, the person on the right doesn't exist. Uh, and this is how things got really bad. Um, you know, the app just really wasn't taking off. I'm, I'm getting my business mind straight here. And then I figured it all out. It, it all made sense because I know the kids love Facebook. 
and the, the kids say I'm vibe, right? We're, we're vibe. Yup. So I figured I need to figure out how to be cool on Facebook. So I wrote a step-by-step -step guide to being cool on the hottest social media website. Everyone will be jealous, including the teenagers and the photos that they're sharing. So that's how I ended up not even building this app. And so I want to thank you. Uh, my app does not have a name. It's not in the app store. It's just a story. No one else? Anyone else? Roy, were you, are you getting up to come up? <laughs> yes, yes, come, come, come. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you all for coming to my pitch talk here. I'm going to talk a little about my new app. I've uh, been working on this for a while now, so I'm really happy to be here showing it to you. Well, I mean, some of it or some of the ideas on it. Uh, and it's an app about um, sharing recipe videos for dogs. As you may or may not know, dogs are very into intelligent creatures, right? <laughs> and when I first had this idea, well, I mean, we have lots of things to think about when building a new app, but I was very uh, concerned about getting, you know, all the security on place because, you know, governments have been paying more and more attention to security. So cyber law uh, was kind of like one of the first things we want to tackle with this app. <laughs> and, well, and as you may know, dogs, uh, they kind of might have a hard time manipulating some of their recipes, right? Like, and, and they may want to become a different being in order to maybe uh, achieve these tasks, right? Of putting together that, that those, all those recipes and stuff, right? So uh, I was thinking how I could actually benefit from all these things that might be in their minds. And we, we don't know, right? We can read the dog's mind. So maybe they're dreaming about something like being, I don't know, the genie that can just miraculously put together that chicken that they saw on over the table and they want to run for it and eat that thing, right? <laughs> well, anyways, that's, that's when we got distracted. We had this little, you know, side thing about trying to cater for, you know, the kitten market. It didn't, went, didn't work too well. But I think, yeah, I think it's because it kind of, the, the worst thing was it detracted us from all the security and the cyber uh, space that we had. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, I took this slide from another presentation I had. So, it might seem a little bit out of context here. But the important thing is that it is going to be a web app. It's going to be on the web. It's not on going to be the phones. You can go on your desktop, or if you're a dog, maybe you're going to have, I don't know, some new device for dogs, and uh, it's going to be there because it's on the web, right? So anyways, yeah, <laughs> one of the promotion, you know, uh, <laughs> that we've been thinking about is getting this uh, uh, perpetuate email thread that just go spamming and spamming the entire internet so that eventually it can reach dogs' emails accounts, when they get one, it might be a century from now, but it, it keeps going, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> and uh, we had to think about some of the, you know, far, far in the future stuff, like what if the dogs can actually transform into something else, right? What if humans become dogs, right? Like, then you might have a whole new segment to cater to, right? So... Anyways, yeah, reaching the end here. So, uh, and, I, and I kind of put together these questions here that you can be thinking yourself. And we can all work together on how we can improve this app so that the dogs of the future can be doing their recipes. So, yeah, well, well thank you all for, for coming to my talk. And, uh, yeah, don't forget... My app name is uh, the Doggo Reno. Yay! Well done, well done. All right, last call. You don't have to 
leave here, but you do have to come up and do a talk. No, no, no one? Yeah, all right. Yeah. Wow. Wow. All right. Well, I'm, I'm definitely ready for this. As ready as I am for this as I am for my talk tomorrow. <laughs> so we'll see. But um, all right. So sports betting for sports mascots. That is synergy if I've ever heard it. And so we're only asking for 1.5 billion raised today at maybe a 0 0.01 percent is what you get so that's probably the best deal um and i think i wanted to invite my co-founder up here my co-founder um is here and we're at, we've been practicing this pitch uh non-stop for weeks and we trade off every slide and a bad thing has never happened are you watching this we were watching this we were watching the markets we were watching this opportunity slip by everyone everyone and we can capitalize if with your help we can capitalize on this amazing opportunity worldwide. It's worldwide opportunity. Yep, we've been practicing that all night. And so sports betting is just like Pinocchio because you, if you lie, your nose gets longer and you lose money, a lot of money. Um, he's, and so dads, kids, um, it, it makes a lot of sense. It's a very family friendly app. We want families to use it, kids to use it with their parents and go broke, hopefully, and then you make money. It's going to have earth-shattering opportunity, I swear. There's just the, right to the core, we can do this. We have the right team. We have the just, it's going to impact this world. We Just such a great opportunity for you to get invested in us, for us to create some sports bets that are just out of this world. <laughs> so, so the state of cat maymays, I believe, I just learned how to pronounce this today. Um, so they've been going on for at least a year, um, 2011, 2012. This, we made this deck in 2012. Uh, still relevant today, I believe. Uh, no reason it wouldn't be. Cats, still good. Sports betting, still good. Um, but ceiling cats, the, we will install them in your house if you don't use our app. Whoa, and you know cats? They got that synergy going. It's an amazing market because it's, it's basically NFTs, right? So there's this cat has a soul. It's sold to the other cat. And you know what? The, this guy, Rupert, you know, first, first uh, employee, employee number one, he morphed and did this amazing renaissance. Carl, he's in the group too. Amazing founding team. Oh, my favorite slide, web one, verse two, verse three, and we are going to six with this app, by the way. Um, we're skipping four, we're skipping five. Four and five are, are done. And so three is AI semantic mobility. Six is AI semantic mobility, sports, betting, and you go broke. Like it's just, you don't have any money left. Forget the cloud. So basically we're getting to the end here. In conclusion, really, the hypothesis was correct. We are right. We are on the money here, and you need to be too. So there's only a couple questions. Is the water warm in the room? Are we getting dry? It might be Friday, almost Friday, but are you ready to invest with us today? Friday. Got to get down on Friday. So the primary evil of the internet is piracy. Our app will be no piracy allowed. Um, we did pirate it already, so that's why you can't pirate it again. We stole this app from other other people. Um, fan, not FanDuel. Ban Cool is our app. The name. Uh, well, that's the last. Wait, I've, I've got ahead of myself, but it, we just scribbled it out. The logo. Um, we have a, a really good logo now. Um, okay, so in retrospect, this is Fan Cool. The duel. The uh, don't forget about us, don't sleep on us, impact, bet. We're going all the way from cloud to the universe, right? Like, let's go. Okay, thank you. <laughs>